Press Fibers Knitting Podcast. I'm Elizabeth and I'm coming to you from Northwest Montana. This is a knitting podcast where I'll be talking about all of my finished projects and what I'm currently knitting on and anything that I'm dreaming of knitting. Thank you for joining me and I will start off with what I'm wearing. I actually only have on knit socks today and they're just Rose City Roller socks. So um, later on in the episode, I'm going to be talking about, um, there's a giveaway to talk about, but I also wanted to um, talk about a future knitting plan that I have in mind that I'm just going to invite all of you to join along with me. If you're interested, we can call it a knit along. Otherwise, I'm going to be knitting something. So I'll talk about that later though. First up is what I finished. So my first finished project is actually also a new cast on. So I cast on my Elf Workshop colorway, which is just the speckled colorway. Um, and the stripes are actually minis. The red with the speckled was a Christmas in July colorway. And um, I wanted to cast these on because Dana Ray Makes is doing her Christmas in July which actually goes through August. And so I finally have a something to enter in her make along. And these are <laughs> my first socks for Summer Sock Camp 2022. All of the socks I finished last episode were actually started before camp started. So this will be my first entry into both of those. Um, I did a one by one rib for the cuff 15 rounds and then I just started in on adding the stripes each um, each stripe is about six rounds and I was measuring it they were taking just under a gram per stripe so that means one two three four five yeah of the green I have just about 10 grams left the red I should have about 10 grams left, but we'll talk about that one in a second. I also did a short row heel and I got that pattern, just the basic pattern out of the Vogue knitting book. So um, I hadn't done a short row heel in a really long time. So that was good to have like a little check in on that. With weaving in, all of these ends. I did Knitty Natty came out with a video earlier this year so maybe this spring called um, Never Weave In Ends Again or something very similar. So I did that and I think it went really well. I would say that I need to work a little bit on my tension when you are dropping one and picking up the next yarn the dropped yarn weaving that in I need to work on that but I recommend that video it was very helpful and all my stripes pretty much line up so first pair of socks for two make-alongs very pleased about that okay so the rest of that red mini being 10 grams is actually substantially less but that's because I started another sock and I still have the ends to weave in. Let me um, put it on a blocker here. It's a little shorty sock and it's also using the Elf Workshop. I wanted to see if I could get two pairs of socks out of Elf Workshop and I totally will be able to do that. Here's the sock that I made. And so I have one more to make, and this is all the red I have left. I don't know if I'll have enough red. I'm gonna weigh it before I start, that way I'll kind of have an idea of how much I used in this. But I have plenty of Elf Workshop still. So I'm excited about that. I'll get these cast on here shortly. I have two other socks on the go. So as you can tell, we are already into works on progress. Okay, this one is 
by Anna Knitter. It's her gorgeous pattern called the Helgen Socks. And I put on it a little stitch marker by Simply Serving. I got this stitch marker when Bad Wolf Girl Megan was doing a skein plus charm a few years ago. So that's the little guy from How to Train a Dragon. And then the Helgen socks look like dragon scales. It's very pretty. I'm hoping the light is picking up that fun pattern. So Helgen is after the video game Skyrim. I asked my son about it. He knew all about it. He was telling me. But there's a dragon in it, and that's what Helgen is named after. So this is on my Beatrix Potter colorway, the Mr. McGregor's Garden, which is a Peter Rabbit colorway. And there's another Beatrix Potter coming out this month. It's on pre-order right now. It is Benjamin Bunny, which I'm calling that one Rabbit Tobacco. In the story, um, they talk about that they sell rabbit tobacco in their store, which is what we call Lavender, which I thought was a super cute name. So my next sock was one that my viewers voted on last time. So I asked which sock I should cast on. Should I cast on the Most Intelligent Witch self-striping or Lion Witch Wardrobe colorway? And the votes came in as Lion Witch Wardrobe. And I've got a... Doo -doo, let's turn that around. Not wanting to turn. A stitch marker on here from Three by the Sea. They did have a set of markers that were all London themed, so that fits for the Pevensey siblings being from London, but also it's not for the Queen, it's because they were the kings and queens of Narnia, and of course the lion represents the one king. So we've got the lion for these two colors, and in my mind it goes the witch, and then Susan Peter Edmund Lucy. So I love these colorways. She did a stellar job. This is Night Owl Fibers. And then the pattern I'm doing is String of Lights, which is Lindsay from Sock Witchery. And yeah, I can see that I'll be using that pattern again. It's very cushy, squishy. I like it. Um, let's see. So all of these have been on Chowgu US1 2.25 millimeter needles. I do everything in Magic Loop currently. Um, I've tried other ways. This is just my current favorite. Let's see. That is it for my works in progress. And thank you to everybody who voted because I was planning on doing a shorty sock, but the votes were like, do not you dare waste that self-striping on a shorty sock. So everybody wanted a full sock. Full sock you got. All right. Next up is in this bag, which is by Elk Mountain Rags, and it is holding my night shift. So I've made, I feel like a decent amount of progress. I don't think I have a marker on saying where I was. Oh, there it is. It's matching, just a little guy. So I was this far along last time and so I put on that much. It's funny because I had the matching colorways going where both balls of yarn had um, sort of one was like a steel blue and the other was a royal blue and the second I came out of that and needed to start out yet you could actually see the pattern is when I chose not to follow the pattern but I'm totally okay with it. I think it looks great and I had to keep going until I got out of this yellow and into this um, light cream color. And next up on my colors, it looks like I'm going to start going teal with more of the cream or even into a tan. So that'll be pretty. This is Noro, the Akari base. And it's number 13 and number 17 are the two colorways. And 
I was doing some math because last episode I was like, oh, I don't have high hopes of finishing this. But I did the math and I figured out if I do like 12 rows, 12 back and forths every day for a while and then go drop down to eight because they keep getting bigger and bigger. Do that, there's a potential that I could finish it by the end of the knit along, which is the Ruth Loves to Knit and Little Monkeys and Me are doing the Across the Pond shawl knit along. So there's a chance I could have it finished by the end of September. So we shall see. Let's see, what size needles are those? The yarn is like, they call it an Aran weight. I'd call it a DK weight personally. It's really not that thick of a yarn. These are size nine, which is a 5.5 millimeter. I went up one higher than what the pattern recommended so I could work the, um, I just liked the fabric it was creating better at that. And the I cord was also too tight. So I followed, Stephen West has a little tutorial, but I talked about that last episode. So I won't get all into that again. All right, so there are a couple other items that I am working on that are in the green room. So that means that I'm not currently working on them. I'm just waiting to work on them. So in the green room right now would be my Trelawney top by Tammy Gore. And that I pull out maybe once a week and do a couple rounds while we're watching TV or something. So it's not really making any progress. So I'm just gonna leave it in the green room. The other one is my Getaway Cardi by Alicia Plummer. And that is also in the green room because it needs the needles off the Trelawney top. So both of those are just gonna sit there and wait and I will get to them when I get to them. All right, next up is my Imagine Knitting. And this is actually my big thing this week. I have quite a few things that I wanted to talk about. They are, of course, not all gonna happen. They are just things that I have been looking at. So the first thing is the potential of a knit along. I am gonna be knitting and I would love it if you'd knit along with me. So I'm gonna be doing um, a Tolkien themed knit along and I'm gonna grab a couple yarns here. I think this is the main ones. So I've got three yarns that I'm gonna show you. These are just ones I have in stock right now. This is What Have I Got in My Pocket, which is part of the riddle with um, Smeagol and Elvish Singing, and then Last Light of Doran's Day. So starting on August 22nd, I'm gonna knit up Last Light of Doran's Day. And I'm gonna do it in socks. And I already know the pattern I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do Lindsay of Sock Witchery's Second Breakfast. So I'm starting on August 22nd because I wanna finish on September 22nd, which is Bilbo and Frodo's birthday. So the yarn will be Tolkien themed. The pattern is Tolkien themed and the end day, Tolkien themed. So I'm all about that. If you'd like to join in, I figure if you wanna choose any Tolkien themed yarn, whether it's mine or somebody else's, and we can make a Tolkien themed pattern and have it done on Bilbo and Frodo's birthday. It just sounds like fun to me. So I invite you to join along. I will maybe hop on Instagram and see if there's any hashtags that um, we could use just so we can see what everybody's making. I'll try to find something that's original. I'll let you know. But that's the first thing in my imagining that I foresee actually happening. The rest, I want to go over all the suggestions that you guys gave me. Last episode, I asked for cowl recommendations and baby sweater recommendations. So I'm going to tell you guys what all that was brought up 
and I will try to put up pictures as I talk about each one or at least mention each one so you can see what other people were recommending. So first up would be, let me put these away. That was gonna annoy me if they were sitting out. So first up, I'll talk about the cowl. I wanted a simple cowl that could be like a double wrap cowl for my husband. He likes things to be, hmm, not draw attention to him. I won't say plain, but basically, yeah, plain. <laughs> um, so I was asking for recommendations. One of the first recommendations I got was the simple but effective cowl by Tin Can Knits, which I had never seen that pattern before. And I've been on their website a bajillion times and it just passed right past me, passed right by. So that's a good option. And then the other one that I think might be the winner for me is Bloody Martini, which is by Valentini Cosiani. Cosiani? And it was just a very pretty, it almost looks like maybe a little bit of a waffle pattern. Definitely can wrap it twice, so that might be the winner. It's a fingering weight, so my husband said his requirements were it needed to be warm. And he didn't say it had to be a double wrap, but I figured that'll keep him warmer. I made him a scarf years ago. We went to Joann's and I told him, pick out what yarn you want. <laughs> he picked out two of the ugliest yarns. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. Together, they are not pretty. <laughs> but I made it for him. And every time he wears it, I just want to go, I didn't make that. Please don't tell people I made that. And it's not not that it's Joanne's yarn. Do not get me wrong. I'm not being a snob. It's the two together look ridiculous. So he picked out a cable pattern, but he wanted me to stripe it. And the striping with the cabling looks ridiculous. <laughs> so I will be happy to replace it. Uh, the yarn he chose was a wool and acrylic blend, and he loves it because it's super warm. And he works, he's in and out um, of the weather all day, so he really wants to be warm. So I want to make sure that whatever cowl I make keeps him warm. So I'm thinking it's, a, it's asking for a fingering weight. Maybe I'll go up to a sport weight, or I might have him... Feel, um, feel like mohair and see if he likes the feeling of that. I think he would. When I wear a sweater that I made with mohair, he's constantly like petting me. <laughs> so I think he'd like the feeling of it, but that would definitely help with the warmth factor. So if I put that with it, he'd just have to make sure it didn't get caught in his zippers because he wears hoodies all winter. I think that would work. I'll keep playing with it. That's probably the winner for the cowl, unless something else jumps into my line of sight. Yeah, something new and sparkly. So thank you for the recommendations for the cowl. And let's see. Okay, baby sweaters. I have a lot to go over. Some of them are ones that I think are very common that if you listen to other podcasts, you've at least heard the name of them. I'm still going to pop a picture of them up. So a couple that I think are very popular are the anchor sweater or the anchor jacket. I got recommendations for both of those. That's a petite knits. And then also baby vertebrae, which is Kelly Van... Sorry, my notes are right down here. Van Nickirk? Nykirk. I can't read my handwriting. <laughs> so, um, baby vertebrae, which I will say, for some reason in my brain, that was a Hohi Locatelli pattern, which it is not. So I need to get on her page, her, see if she has a website, 
and see why I thought that was hers, what she makes that's, I'm not even going to say similar. I think she had a pattern from when her kids were little. And I think that's how she started being a designer. I'll have to look into that. But anyways, so there are two popular ones. It's not by Hohi Locatelli. It's by Kelly Van Mickirk. Then the next one was Itty Bitty Raglan. And that is by Christy Bowden Designs. And I think it was Itty Bitty Raglan Stockinette. And that looks like just your nice, basic, quick knit. So that's a nice one to have, like on the back burner if I need something fast. Another one was the Antler Cardigan. And that's by Tin Can Knits. And that one put me down an entire rabbit hole because then I started looking all over their patterns. And I was pretty close to convincing myself that I wanted to do Ice Fall, which is one of their color work patterns, because I already have it. It was part of the Strange Brew um, set that they did where they put together all of the instructions so you could make your own yoke design. And it also had um, the Ice Fall in it. So I think I've talked myself out of that one just because it's color work for right now, but simple color work. Maybe I'll do it for a toddler at some point or myself. <laughs> uh, that's the nice thing about tin can knits. They come in all the sizes. Okay, next up would be Norwegian fur, which is super cute. I really like that one. Yeah, that's definitely in the running. However, there's also the in oh Norwegian fur is by Og Knitwear or O G E Knitwear. I'm not sure on that one, but yeah, super cute. Then the next one is in threes cardigan, which has my heart. That is so so cute, and it's by Kelly Herdrich. I think. I will wait and do it also as a toddler top, but it is adorable, super cute. In fact, if they were all girls that I was knitting for, that would be the pattern that I'd probably be going with. It's super cute, but they're almost all boys. Side note, since last episode where I had five babies, which I had whittled down to just a few to make things for, Three more babies are on the radar. What? And only one of them is a girl. <laughs> so um, I think out of those three, they all meet my requirements that either they have a knitter or they would have no desire to have a hand knit garment. So I'm not gonna put them on my list. Although one of them I might give it to them anyways, even though I know that they really could care less. But if I enjoy knitting one of these garments enough to make a second, then they'll get one, but only then. So there are my qualifications. Okay, so now I'm down to do 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 the last one, which is another great recommendation, and I love it. It's by Froganet, which is Lisa Shimmery. I think I'm close to pronouncing that right. It's a French last name, I believe, um, and it's the Entrechat. Entrechat, I think is how you'd pronounce that. It's also very cute. It's similar to the In Threes cardigan, but I was on the on her patterns, looking them all through, and fell in love. I want to knit like six. She has over 80 patterns, I think. There were six things that I'm like, yes, casting that on, thank you. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> to go with the Tolkien theme, she has an ebook of baby garments. She has a ton of baby garments, so that's probably why I got up to six so quickly. But she has an ebook. Um, it was something cottage themed. That is all Tolkien. Yes. Thank you. All of them. I actually um, sent my daughter a picture of them and I was like, look at these little baby knits. Aren't they adorable? I mean, seriously, Turkish Britches, adorable name. But then she also had one called Mithril and I showed that to my daughter who, um, <laughs> she's like, yes. You need to save all of these baby patterns for in three decades when I have children. <laughs> so um, we both agreed that those were adorable patterns. And I'm very happy that somebody pointed me in the direction of this designer because I found a whole slew of patterns that I think are adorable. In fact, my daughter and I now want them in adult size as well. Okay, not the britches but the other ones. <laughs> so um, I have quite a few choices for the baby sweaters and I liked somebody's suggestion. There were a couple different suggestions. One was they like the idea of a cardigan better, which I do remember when my kids were itty bitty and it was easier to get something on them that way instead of over their head. And somebody else was like, you know, maybe just make it bigger for when they're a little bit older so it's not something they can wear for just a month or two which is so true i remember when my kids were little and it was like yeah they're six months old but they're already in nine month clothing and wait now they're seven months old and they're in 12 month clothing okay not quite but it was fast so yeah making something for a little bit older instead of making it for this winter maybe make it for next winter or even if it was like the in threes or the entre shot any of those that were not sweater sweaters yeah that might be how i aim that one that way i also don't feel the pressure to make them right away but I really am very happy with all the um, suggestions you guys gave, the pattern suggestions, but also the ideas of, you know, buttons, no buttons, cardigan versus sweater. So thank you for all of that. And my final thing to talk about is a giveaway. So I've got a little giveaway for you guys. I'm only going to be doing this here on YouTube, so you won't hear about it on any other platform. But it is... Um, I have a bag and some yarn. So the bag is actually this, and it's a cute little mushroom design, and it's got a nice large bottom on it. I actually bought this fabric because I loved it and asked my mom to make it for me. So I told her what I wanted in terms of um, handles and such. She has an Etsy shop with project bags and I will put up a project code, not a project code, a discount code for you guys. She said that she would do that in addition to offering up a bag. So I bought the fabric and she had enough from what I bought to make two bags. So one is mine and one might be yours. So, um, yeah, I just, I like the long straps and stuff. That way I can take this down when I take my dogs down to the bay to play in the water or whatever. I have an easy bag to carry, but a lot of her bags do come with zippers or drawstrings, and she's just new on Etsy. So if you guys want to go check her out, she is elfin doings and um yeah go show her a little bit of love that would be very sweet of you guys and I'll, she gave you guys a discount code too and that code is only good for one week so if you're watching in the first week that's when the code is good for but she is adding more bags she is retired and she is very 
active retired person so she's an artist she writes books and she does these project bags she knits and she's just on the go but I thought um, I would share her work with you guys and the giveaway will include the bag that you just saw and you'll get to choose from my shop a sock set so to enter let's see in the comments I would like to know what is your all-time favorite pattern so is it your favorite to knit or your favorite to wear so you have to tell me the name of it and if it's favorite knitting or favorite wearing or both so and then I will choose somebody um, right before the next episode I'm gonna not record until probably we'll say right around August 31st so yeah let's just say it's open till the end of August and that way I'm trying to think sorry I'm trying to think what day August 31st is on I think the 2nd of September is a Saturday and I'll try to have my episode up by then. So enter now and you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your comments last episode. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode. Please like, please subscribe. I am able to look at the analytics on my videos and that's really cool. One thing I noticed is of all the viewers, only 25, 26% of you guys have actually subscribed. Um, it does say that like 80% of you are returning viewers, which means you just need to hit the subscribe button so you don't have to go look for me every time. And I would love that. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoy your knitting over the next few weeks. Bye.